What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about using the extension SketchFX to create a split style rendering in SketchUp. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to overlay two different styles into our model so that they look like they're kind of transitioning into each other. This is usually something that you'd have to use something like Photoshop for, but I find Photoshop requires a bit more knowledge. Um, I, I think SketchFX makes something like this a little bit easier. And before I get started, I do wanna take a second to thank my newest supporter on Patreon, Alan Karen. Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on the on this channel, um, maybe you want to support me, you can check out that link in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I do want to apologize if there's any extra background noise. Um, this morning I woke up and my heat was out, so I have a space heater running in the background in my uh, workspace, and uh, I tried to muffle the sound as much as possible, but that's what that is if you do hear that and if it's distracting, so I do apologize for that. You can download a copy of SketchFX by visiting thesketchupessentials.com slash sketchfx. It does have a 10-day free trial, so if you want to download it and follow along with this tutorial, that's a great way to start learning how to use the software, and uh, also just try it out and see if you like it. Um, so what we're going to do in this model is we're going to create an image where we transition from one style on this side to another style on this side using masks in SketchFX. And uh, so this model is a model that I got from the building bundle with Placemaker. So when you purchase a Placemaker license, it comes with a whole bunch of models that you can use for context. And in this case, I thought this would be a good example model um, mostly. So the only problem is this one tower is really tall and so it gets a little bit hard to get everything that you want in one scene, but we're gonna see what we can do with this. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of set up my general view. So get kind of a general idea of what I want my view to look like. Um, so in this case, there's not really a ground plane, so I'm kind of adjusting my view so you can't see this plane. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna apply a style where I transition either from this side being kind of hand sketchy drawn to more of a blueprint-ish looking style over here, um, or maybe from this side to this side. We'll just kind of see. And so when you're working with SketchFX, the first thing you're gonna do is you just click on the little button for apply effect. And when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up this box and it's also going to apply a certain effect to your model if you have something set in your presets. So like for now, I'm just gonna click on this button on the left to remove all the effects because I don't want anything in here yet. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our base effect. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna use one of the SketchFX presets. And so there's several different presets in here that'll probably work pretty good for what we're doing. Um, so the mechanical one probably would be pretty good. I mean, there's a few different options. There's one for like watercolors, um, that'll take it and apply more of a watercolor look to it. The mechanical one, um, I think gives it a little bit of an x-ray of the building itself. And you can see how as I do this, um, it takes a little while to update. And that's even on my computer, which is a really fast computer. Um, so if you have a slower computer, one of the things you might want to consider doing is unchecking this box for auto update. That way you can rotate around in your model and it won't actually update until you click this button right here for update view. And one thing to note is since this renders in your viewport, sometimes it kind of gets stuck on this view if you turn auto update off. So probably all you need to, or in this case, all you need to do is just tap that space key in order to get back out of that. So if you get kind of locked in there, that's how you get out of that. So if you turn auto update off, you adjust your view, you can just click this button right here to update your view and re-render it. That way it's not re-rendering every time you move around at all in your model. And so I'm gonna turn auto update back on. And so it's gonna re-render this and I've got kind of a general view right here. You could also go with um, probably one of the architectural views. So if you go to like architectural one, that's also probably a pretty good one. And the other thing I want to note is if you have a license for ambient occlusion, which is their rendering program, um, any of these that have the AO after them means that it'll actually render your model in ambient occlusion and then it'll apply the effects to it. So, um, but you can see that's going to take significantly longer because it's basically rendering it twice. So even if you have that license, you probably don't 
want to use that at least for right now because it's going to take a while so there's architectural three let's go ahead i kind of like the way the one the mechanical one looked so i'm going to go with the mechanical one preset right here so that gives me kind of some sketchy edges um, it applies some x-ray that sort of thing to this model and so now you've got all of these settings in here that all are associated with this view that it's applying right now um, which is fine so what we're going to do is we're actually going to come in here and we're going to add another effect down at the bottom and the effect that we're going to add is called a mask and any of you that know well actually we're going to add a style first so you're going to come in here you're going to go to the bottom of the page and by the way this applies things um, in a top to bottom way so the things at the bottom that are applied on the bottom of your model um, are going to show up at the top over here and so what that means is as you layer things on top of each other the things at the bottom are going to be the things that are layered on top of everything else over here and so what we're going to do is we're just going to click the plus button we're going to go down and we're going to add a style so in this case we're just going to click the drop down find style and click ok and what that's going to do is that's going to apply a style down here below all of your other effects and so what we want to do is we want to select one of our styles in our SketchUp model because right now um, it's not applying a style you can see how the default style is none and so what we're going to do is we're going to click this little button right here and we're going to tell it which style to apply to the model so we're going to click this button and then we're going to go up and we'll look at a couple of them so this is what the blueprint one would look like and you can see how it kind of merges with the rest of the styles that we've already applied in here because the opacity is set to um, 0.5 so if you were to drag this all the way across the opacity would be set back to 1 and you wouldn't be able to see any of the other effects so for right now let's see maybe I'm gonna go ahead and turn the opacity all the way up to 1 just so I can kinda look at what these do so in this case I may I'm probably gonna go with the pencil on tracing paper style um, just because I like the way that it is kind of more hand-drawn looking and so so you can see how if I leave the opacity at 0.5 everything kind of shows through well instead I'm gonna set my opacity to 1 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a mask to my model and so adding a mask basically tells SketchFX that there's a um, that you want to hide some of your model or that you only want to apply this to part of your model and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the style and then we're gonna click the plus button and the reason we want to click on the style is because we this is going to be a child of the style option so we've told SketchFX to apply a style on top and now we're gonna click this plus button now we're gonna add a linear mask and click OK and so what a linear mask does is it basically draws a line across your screen and it tells SketchFX to apply this effect so in this case this style which we can go ahead and rename pencil style just so we can tell what it is in this list over here basically it's telling pencil style to only apply itself to the masked area and so you can adjust where that mask is like for example I can come in here and I can set the angle to 45 degrees and you can see how what this is gonna do when I set this to 45 degrees is this is actually gonna turn the angle of the mask so now I'm masking this style across this model this way so you can adjust that maybe I set this to 35 or maybe I set this to 55 degrees and then you can also adjust where it is on your model so you can see as I drag this slider it's moving it across and then you can also move it up and down by adjusting the Y so you can adjust the X and the Y factors on here to adjust where this mask actually shows up and so in this case what I've got now is I've got my kind of hand-drawn style over here and then you can see how as it comes across we're transitioning into the style that was below it and so in this case kinda what I want is I want 
basically this half of my model to have the pencil style and the other half to have the other style. And so I'm just gonna mess around with this until I kind of get the look that I want. Cause I wanna be able to move this across so that a little bit more of this building gets picked up. But I don't really want it to apply to the top of my building over here because I want this piece of the building to be more of this uh, kind of blueprint-ish style. And so we're going to call this good enough for right now. And so now what we're going to do, um, and one, one other note real quick is if you check the box for invert mask, what that'll do is that'll flip your mask so that your front side here... So basically it's masking it the other way. So if you invert the mask, then you're basically telling it, okay, everything on the other side of the linear mask that I drew is what I want this to be applied to. So we'll leave this as is for right now. You can see how that's really easy to switch. So we may mess around with that in a bit. But now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a sky. And so in order to add a sky, we're gonna click the plus button and we're gonna go down and we're gonna select image from file. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay once I've selected image from file. And what you need to do is you need to come in here and you need to select an image. And if you click the little arrow right here, there's a series of default images in here that you can use. So you can see how when I brought this in, it's bringing this image in and right now since I've got it below everything else if I set the opacity to 1 it's basically getting applied over top of everything else in your model and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this button for use depth as mask and you can see how when we select the button for use depth as mask it's basically using your model right here as a mask for this object and so you can see how it's basically finding where the outline of this object is and it's applying the sky to it well obviously it doesn't do us any good if this sky is showing up within the building itself so we're going to click this button for invert mask and so what what you'd be telling it at that point is apply the sky to my model everywhere the building isn't and so you can see how when i apply when i flip that off when I flip that by using invert mask, it puts it basically behind my buildings. And so you can see how though we're kind of losing a lot of our, uh, our effect over here because we only want the sky to be behind this more photorealistic or not even photorealistic, but the more detailed option over here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna add a linear mask to your image. And we can go ahead and call this sky just so we know what it is in our list. But then you're just gonna click the plus button and you're just gonna apply one more linear mask. So go ahead, click the plus button, click the drop down and select linear mask and click okay. And you can see how that did the same thing as the other one where it's basically starting off applying a mask straight up and down. Well, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these values from here over to the other linear mask. And so one trick you can use in order to do this is you can use the snipping tool in Windows to take a screenshot of those settings. And then you can click over here and you can just type in those settings so that they match up in your new linear mask. So I'm gonna set this to 65 degrees and I'm going to go ahead, I can close this. All right, so one thing I'm not really liking about the way this looks is there's just kind of not, it doesn't look very good transitioning from this yellow color to the sky. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to try um, going about this a different way and I'm gonna select a different style. So I'm gonna try probably not the generic CAD dropdown. I'm probably gonna try the blueprint style. And so the blueprint style gives us a little bit more um, kind of good transition between this side and this side. And so once we have this transition, um, I'm going to go in here and um, what I'm going to do is on my sky, I'm going to change my blend mode and see what that does to the way that this looks. So the blend mode basically adjusts the way that... Um, the way that your objects interact with each other. So if you look right now, if I have this set on a normal blend mode, I'm getting this kind of weird overlay like uh, artifact over here. So it doesn't look very good. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna select the blend mode, I'm gonna set that to multiply. And so when I set that to multiply, you can see how what that's doing is that's 
taking this and it's kind of like this is also a blend mode in Photoshop where it kind of uh, it kind of averages the colors of the background and the foreground here so that this um, so that instead of getting that weird thing that's blocking your image you get everything kind of averaged out and you can see how now everything's a little bit dark in here and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a brightness so we're just gonna select our sky and then we're gonna go down to brightness and contrast and click OK and so when we add brightness and contrast what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust the brightness of our model and you can see how right now that's adjusting everything in our model and I don't necessarily want that specifically what I want this one to do is I want it to affect the sky image that we have right here so I'm gonna click this button for effect previous only and so now when I adjust my brightness you can see how it's only adjusting my sky image and you can click and drag and kind of adjust your contrast as well so I'm actually gonna rotate this down a little bit and re-update my model so that'll give me this kind of sky image and if you wanted to you could also apply something to adjust like the red green values or something like that um, so I think I'm gonna leave that the way it is the other thing you can do if you want to adjust the way that this uh, basically transitions between the two you can drag the little size slider and so if you drag the size slider all the way to zero what that's gonna do is then this transition doesn't blend at all but if you click the size slider what you can do is you can kind of adjust this so that there's a little bit more of a smooth transition in your model and a lot of this is kind of trial and error type stuff so you can take these principles and you can apply them to uh, making your model look however you want it to look so and then once you have this set the way that you want it you can click this uh, this disk button right here to save a copy of your image as like a JPEG or a TIFF or a whatever image style you want to save that as. You can also click this save button right here to save this preset for future use. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Would you like to see more SketchFX tutorials? Is this something you're interested in? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So please check out that link in the notes down below. Um, but in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.